Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed Teaching. Uh, this is the latest installment in my Future Learn Diaries. Um, this time I'm going to be telling you about a three-week three -week course run by the University of Newcastle, Australia. And it's called What Does It Mean to Be Human? And it's an introduction to the humanities. So, let's take a look. So this was a pretty neat three-week course and it looked at a lot of the different areas of the humanities, um, concentrating most on art and on ways of seeing with references to people like John Berger, uh, Noam Chomsky's in there somewhere. Um, there's a great little bit on, Aborig uh, on um, Australian art from uh, the art of the Aborigines through to kind of like the uh, colonists and adventurers that landed on its shores um, around the time of Captain Cook and then on to more modern times, which uh, really shows an interesting journey that art in Australia has been on. Uh, we also look a little bit at uh, epistemology. I like these big words. Uh, epistemology, I had to check. I had an idea, but I wanted to check it anyway. And uh, yeah, it's about the idea of knowing where knowledge comes from. Uh, so that sort of area was very interesting. Um, I'll come on to that again in the discussions area. So um, let's have a look. So in terms of level of difficulty, I would say that uh, really the title tells you everything. It's an introduction, it's an introductory course to the humanities. So there's no real knowledge that is expected of you, only um, an open mind really. You need to be able to think about things and to see if uh, your own ideas correspond with what's on the course. Yeah, it's pretty good that way. So let's look at three things that I learned. The first one was more review or revision than uh, learning afresh and that was uh, connected with this idea of uh, epistemology and um, learning about the different origins of knowledge. Um, it was quite good to kind of do a typology of these things like knowledge that comes from authority. So if a teacher tells you something you generally accept that it's true. If your parents tell you something you generally accept it's true. It was quite important to consider uh, if they're right because why do they think it's true? Did they learn it from their teachers and their teachers before them? Uh, there needs to be a better way of getting knowledge. Uh, we learnt about the idea of generalisation so this was um, the idea that if you see something we tend to generalise from that and this is how we end up with stereotyping. And then it moved on to things like the scientific um, principles of the research, uh, the, uh, the scientific method, sorry to use its correct name, that um, when you come to the conclusion that you have some knowledge, you need to be able to repeat the process and get the same result, and other people need to be able to do the same as well. Otherwise, it's still a little bit too subjective. So the second thing that I learned was um, about the evolution or the changes that occurred in art, in art in Australia. I've become very interested in art recently, so having a look through some different pieces and seeing kind of the early artists that arrived in Australia trying to make art look, uh, the uh, Australian landscape look like uh, Austria, for example. Snow-capped mountains like the Alps. Uh, they wanted a place like home, I suppose, but it's not home. So it was really interesting to see that sort of thing. Um, and the, yeah, the last thing would be about how media framing works. Again, this was something that I was aware of, but it was good to go over some of the details and look at more evidence for it. So media framing is this idea that uh, what we talk about is generally dictated by the media. Maybe not what we think about it, but certainly the subject itself. So if the media isn't talking about it, people themselves tend not to talk about it or be aware of it. So media framing was quite an interesting aspect of the course. So, is this a teachable course? Absolutely it is, definitely. Um, it's the sort of course that your students would want. Uh, it's got lots of discussion questions, lots of things to think about, some new language for you to um, uncover with the students, but most of all, you'll get them talking, and you'll get them talking in an intelligent way. Um, so, you could really transplant a lot of the course content into the classroom, making it very useful and usable for the, uh, people like me, EFL teachers.
So, let's look at the presentation of the course. Uh, well, the videos were really good, uh, very well produced, very slick. Um, they were the right length, uh, they contained something, in inter something interesting in every single one. They had uh, things that you could really um, talk about with your students. And one of the things that I really liked about it as an EFL teacher, and certainly from the English as a lingua franca or English as a global language, uh, standpoint it was really good to have some different accents in there it's not all kind of the London dialect you had a um, proper Australian accents there and they don't come across in the stereotypical you know put another shrimp on the barbie sort of thing these were softer accents uh, more akin to what you'd actually find if you go to Australia so I thought that in itself was a real plus um, in terms of uh, the flow uh, I think that it really worked well that they, they built the course so that one point led on to the next. So it's like applying layers of varnish to a picture. So you get these um, the deeper meaning comes through, not in one step, but in several. So that was very good. And that brings us on to the interactive component. The discussion boards themselves were pretty, uh, pretty lively, but I think they had been lively. I think with future learn, you got to you need to time it right because they tend to start, have start dates and finish dates for most courses, and you can join at any time that the course is ongoing and for the next couple of weeks afterwards. The problem is that if you don't hit it at the right time, you miss out on all the lively discussion. People don't come back and look at their comments and see what you've written and things like that. So I didn't get much interaction myself, but that was just poor timing on my part. I think if you were careful, then it would be a lot better. And if you're in a group, it would be a lot easier for um, your students to talk to each other. Um, there is a discussion question. I think I mentioned that before. There's a discussion question with every step. So that's something that you could just you know, either copy and paste or show on the whiteboard uh, to get your students talking. I think that was really good. And um, then I think the only weak, weak point was that there was nothing to kind of cap off the, the experience. These three weeks were good. Um, I mean, I didn't take three weeks to do the course, but you can certainly. Um, the problem really is that there's no kind of summative thing at the end. It would be nice to have maybe, maybe a test or because it's the humanities, maybe a short writing task that you could really get into. Uh, one thing that I remember from doing something like this in a uh, course, I was doing a course there on, on Soren Kierkegaard. Um, we had a peer-reviewed essay task. So you had to write an essay of about a thousand words, put it into the system. It got sent off to two different peers and they gave feedback and you had to mark two other people's work. So there was kind of a round robin sort of system there. And I think that really worked well. You could do it in the classroom. You don't need to do it in the course. You could do that as a task in the classroom and have your students mark each other's work or you could mark it for them. But on a course itself like this, you kind of wish that there was a bit more at the end so that you could, you know, once you've been offered these morsels of knowledge, have something bigger to sink your teeth into. But then I suppose one of the points that they, they make is that if you want to do more, you can study with the University of Newcastle in Australia and do a proper uh, Bachelor of the Arts degree. I don't have that sort of money. So, on to the grading. And if you've been listening, you'd think this would be pretty easy to grade, and it is. Uh, my own personal grade, five stars, really interesting course, really got a lot from it. Uh, my EFL grade is also five stars. I think this is a great course to bring into the classroom and your students will really uh, enjoy it. They'll get a lot from it. Uh, in terms of levels, I would say that B2 would be possible. Um, C1, absolutely. But B2 with a bit of help, um, yeah, you could certainly do something like that. So there we go. This is now six courses I've done on uh, FutureLearn. Um, if I'd paid for each one individually, uh, that would have been quite close to what I paid to do the Unlimited and I've only had about a month of um, Future Learn Unlimited so far so um, I'm getting good value for money if nothing else. Um, speaking of money though, if you want to help me out, uh, think about buying me a coffee. I'm having a coffee here to go with uh, making the videos so feel free to buy me one as well. There's a link in the description. And then of course do the usual YouTube things like like the video, subscribe, you know, 
that's the way it works, isn't it? So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've gotten something from this video. Um, and if you're on Future Learn, have a look for me. I'm there somewhere. You can find me. Take care. Bye.